I take my text this morning. There are seasons of life. Seasons of life. And while we're living in one season, often it's hard to see what the next season will be. While we're experiencing one thing, it's difficult to say what will be even when we do not yet see it. I am overjoyed this day. I love her with all my heart. She is now entering into a new season. It was not too long ago that Brother Raheem Spider, Brother Spidey, all the way from the great city of New York, believed that the Lord had given him a good thing. Amen. For you see, the scripture said, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Well, I would tend to concur with that, Brother Spivey. I believe that she is one of the best of things. So will you encourage and bless and celebrate with us the engagement of Brother Raheem Spivey and Sister Kimberly E. Houston? Amen. Enough of what you believe you need enough of to survive. Mm. 
You see it all the time, even on Sunday mornings. It seems that those commercials are more and more as Sunday draws near. Those commercials that show us the children in far off lands that simply do not have enough to eat. I've always wondered when I watch these commercials about these far off lands, places that Deacon Cole might have been to in his travels, and he finds these places where we see children who don't have enough. I sometimes wish in the valley that they would just take a camera down Broad Street somewhere. Maybe they should find a way down Allegheny Avenue. Maybe go to where they find themselves in the wild hundreds of Chicago. Maybe go to South Central LA. Maybe find themselves on the farms of the Deep South. Maybe go down to Baton Rouge. Maybe find themselves on the coast. You don't have to travel from these 50 states to find some children who don't have enough to eat. Amen. For you see, when we always think that the problem is so far away from us, then we come to the conclusion that it's too far for us to do anything about it. Amen. It's a terrible reality when we don't think that we have enough. You know what it is even now. You know people in your own lives. You don't need me to tell you that there are some who are yearning to be loved. Yes. They find themselves doing so many different things, going so many different places, not knowing that they are loved by the one who is loved. They are trying to figure it out, find out, understand why it is that someone treated me this way, find out why daddy left when I was a young child, find out why mama doesn't love me, why my brothers and sisters try to work against me. They find themselves in this space where they say, I don't have enough. There are many people as the new year came, they began to decide for themselves what were going to be the new year's resolutions, what were going to be the promises to self. There are some people who say, I'm not eating any meat this year. There are some people saying that I'm going to go to the gym five days a week for three hours at a time. There are some people that are saying that I'm going to do all these things. I've swore off McDonald's. I'll never go to Burger King. Wendy is not a friend of mine. They've made all these different things in their lives. They've made all these different promises to themselves, but they have forgotten, taking this core, that there is one reality that is true then and now. It was true at the beginning of time, and it's true right now in the year of our Lord, 2016. And that truth is, my brothers and sisters, that God will provide. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. I know sometimes it's hard to see it when we can't see it, and we want to believe that God can do some things even when our eyes are telling us something different. Our ears are hearing something different. Our hands can't feel it. We can't quite taste it. But the word of faith says, if God has said it, yes. then he can surely bring it to pass. Yes. If you go through the Bible time and time again, you don't have to go far to see that God's word will not return to himself void. Yes. When he calls you, he equips you. When he draws you in, he says, this is what you can and will do if you but believe. <laughs> Philippians chapter 4 and verse 9, Paul's first letter, only letter to the church at Philippi, lets us know, and my God. Let us all say that together, and my God. My God. See, that's important. Because it assumes that you may have some other type of God. See, uh, Paul wrote to the church in Philippi saying, And my God. See, I don't know who your God might be. Oh, it might be some people in your neighborhood, some people in your home, and they don't know why they don't have all that they need, Sister Cook. But that's because they find themselves chasing after the wrong God. Amen. See, I, I serve a God that's a capital G all the time. Amen. I serve a God who sits high and looks low. I serve a God who is able to split water and turn water into wine and yeah. let folks walk past on the Red Sea. I serve a God who spoke and it showed up. I serve the only God that matters. Yeah. And my God all right. shall supply all of your needs. All right. And here is the best part, Sister Jody Newton, is that according to his Riches in glory. He's not asking you to borrow anything to meet your need. Right. You ever known somebody that always wants to borrow something to meet their need? Yes. But God doesn't need what you have to meet your own need. Right. He said, I'll meet the need myself. Yes. Yes. Provision made. Yes. Here in the text this morning, we are introduced to Abraham. Mm -hmm. 
I can tell you it's kind of funny. I stepped on my glasses last night, so all y'all look like you're going this way. <laughs> you met Abraham. And God came to Abraham and was telling him that he wanted him to do something. Yet we would be remiss if we came to Abraham and forgot about what took place before. Right. But this isn't the first time that God has asked something of Abraham. Don't you remember he came to Abraham and Abraham was 99 years old and Mother Stephanie said you're going to have a baby. Amen. Sometimes God asks you to believe in something that seems so far reached, so far fetching, something that isn't even possible. See, we sometimes forget that God came to Abraham and said, I want you to leave your country and leave all these folks and go to the land that I will show you. It would seem, Brother Will, that Abraham has done enough responding to God. It would seem as if God has asked enough of this man already. But here God comes again. Oh, I know it's the truth because sometimes we say, God, enough is enough. I've been battling these things for so long. It's been five years. It's been ten years. Haven't I served you long and faithful enough? Haven't I done enough things in my life? Haven't I come to prayer meeting enough times? Haven't I sung songs enough times? Haven't I paid my tithes long enough for you to let some good things come my way? But God is saying, I love you, but I want to test your love. Oh, that's the truth anyway. You don't need God to let you know that sometimes love gets tested. Yes. It's this idea of prove your love to me. I told you last week in a situation of husband and wife, oftentimes the wife will ask for the last piece of food that the husband has. And it's really a test. It's a test. How much do you love me? I know you want the last bite of it, but how much do you love me? Can I have some? <laughs> now, you could ask for it when I had a whole day. But you waited until I had one star first, one peanut chew. So I was at the last bite of my pizza. Now you want to ask for something. It's a test. How much do you love me? It would seem as if God had tested Abraham enough. He left his home. He believed that he'd have a baby. Abraham is looking to reap the fruits of life with God. And now God comes again. And in verse 1, it says that the Spirit came and he said, Abraham. See, many times, if many of us would have been in a situation and we know God is there again asking for us again, we would run away and try not to answer the door. It's kind of like when the Jehovah Witnesses come and you're watching something good on television. <laughs> Close the blinds. Come down. You don't want anyone to see you. I don't want to trap today. It's this idea of wanting to hide when someone is calling your name. But look at Abraham's situation. He says, here I am. See, he's ready to respond to the call of God. Ready for what God would have him to do. Ready that if God asks me to leave again, if God asks me to do whatever he wants me to do, I'm ready to do it. Oh, that is the witness that we have to have today, my brothers and sisters. Amen. The witness that when God says, come on, when he calls you, he says, uh, Sister Tammy, and Sister Tammy says, here I am. Amen. When he says, Alexander, I say, yes, Lord, speak to me, Lord. Yes. I don't know what he's going to say, but I know I've come this far by faith. Amen. Lean on the Lord. Amen. And see, I'm trusted in his holy word. Amen. Because I know a reality, Deacon is Rochester. He has never failed me yet. God has a good track record Amen. of following through what he said he can do. Amen. Abraham says, here I am, and he says it willingly. And God then comes with the most amazing request. Now take now your son. Can you even imagine the mind of Abraham? You're talking about the boy that I believed you for. When my wife was old and we were old and now you've given it to me. Now you, what do you want me to do with my son? Your only son. Whom you love. I want you to take Isaac. And I want you to go off to Moria. And there I want you to burn him up. Can you imagine what that is? Can you imagine what that sounds like? You want me to take my boy, the one I love, <coughs> and take him somewhere and not just sacrifice him. See, that's the mistake that many of us make in the text. 
Don't just think that he is going to be sacrificed. The, the goal and that the request is that he burns them up. Lord help me. I can't imagine someone saying to me, take a lump to a land I'm going to show you. And I want you to burn her up. I can't imagine. They say, I want you to take Abel and walk to where I'll go, where I'll show you, and then I want you to burn her up. But notice Abraham's response. Abraham got up early in the morning. He sat on his donkey, took two young men and Isaac his son. He split some word, wood for the burnt offering, and he went to the place which God had showed him. Sometimes God's plans, we don't understand. Amen. Sometimes God's plans. You remember what the text said in Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 8. My thoughts are not your thoughts. And my ways are not your ways. You just give yourself a headache trying to figure out all the ways of God. Amen. You give yourself a headache trying to figure out how God is going to do it when he said he would do it. Abraham decided that even though I may not understand all that it is, my track record with God lets me know that we're going to get up early. We don't want to delay, for if we delay a little bit, we might miss something that God has for us. Amen. See, there's some of us that we've been knocking days ago in some things, and we have missed some things that God has had for us because we didn't want expeditious about the situation. We laid in the bed when God said, get up. We went left when God said, go right. We went forward when he said, stop, just stand there. Some of us have been missed some things. Yeah. Notice I said, us, don't believe that I'm excluding myself. Amen. But you see, I recognize very full and well the times I've missed God. Amen. And I recognize that the reason that I missed God in some instances is because I couldn't understand what was happening. Amen. But see, I've learned some things. I've learned to put aside this mind that I believe is so small. I've learned to put some things aside and trust that God knows more than me. For you see in Old Testament names of God, the redemptive names of God, and you've heard them before, he has continually shown himself to be Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is your peace. Uh, maybe there's someone here who doesn't know what that really means, but the person that's here today that understands what it is to not have any peace ever in life. Mm -hmm. They can't sleep at night. They wake up with a headache. They don't know what's going on. They know that when God shows up, Jehovah Shalom, they know that that has changed all the situation. Yes. Well, you see, he is your peace. Yes. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is, it, is well. it is well. It is well with my soul. Let's be clear about this yeah. being well with your soul. The soul is the mind, so you understand that if you don't have any peace, your mind is playing tricks on you. Yeah. Oh, y'all know what that's from. Push me, Bill told you. Uh, I'm in the corner room staring at candles. You got to be a certain age or be in a certain generation to understand that situation. <laughs> mind playing tricks on you, but the reality is in this space, Jehovah Shalom comes and he is our peace. Maybe there's one person here, I don't know right now, but maybe there's a person here who needs Jehovah Rock. See, Jehovah Rock, he's our healer. Uh, yes. See, it sounds so cliche that he's our healer, but when your body is racked with pain, yes. you don't need anybody to fake or over you talking about they know some things that they don't know. Yes. You need some folks that know that there's a Jehovah Rapha, yes. someone that can heal you. Yes. Yes. I am the Lord who heals you. Yes. For that person that has felt lonely at various times in their life, maybe they need Jehovah Shama. Yes. Uh, the Lord is there. You see, I, one thing I appreciate about my father, amongst a number of things, is that any time you say to him, well, I don't want you to be alone, his response is always, I'm never alone. Right. Yeah. And see, that has resonated with a young man like me, so I recognize that even if I'm walking by myself, God is there. Yeah. Maybe there's someone that Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is my man. Have you ever needed someone to go ahead of you that they can prepare to let you know that everything's going to be all right? Otherwise, you go in with your eyes closed shut and you don't know what's in front of you. But we know that God 
According to Deuteronomy 31 and 8, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid, my brothers and sisters. Do not be afraid because the Lord is with you. Yeah. Thank you. Jehovah seeking you. The Lord is our righteousness. Yes. You couldn't be right with God unless the Lord did it. Yes. Yes. Oh, you could go get out all the peanut butter and jelly you want. You can go in and call in all the donations that you want. You could go in and get shoes to all the folks that don't have shoes. You could get clothes to all the folks that don't have clothes. But let me tell you something. That still won't make you right with God. Amen. There's only one person who can make right with God. And I, I believe I got one or two witnesses today that understand that there ain't but one way to get right with God. And that is by the blood of Jesus. Last but not least, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Well, I mean, look at the text and you see that God came to Abraham and said, I want you to go take your boy Isaac and go and sacrifice him. And you know that he got up and he got up early to walk that way. And even sometimes it's difficult and sometimes it takes a while to fulfill the call that God has given you. Look at the text when it lets you know, after three days, they finally got to the space. It would seem, Sister Jerry, that if you want me to sacrifice my boy, you should make it close for me to get there. I might change my mind on day two. After day two, I, I get to day three, getting gives, I, I might decide I like having them around. I don't want to sacrifice them anymore. But the Lord wants to know who was in it for the long haul. Right. See, there's a lot. See, this is dangerous space. There's a lot of folks that's always jumping around trying to get fed, but like Pastor Bill Shaw said, you know, folks come and they say, well, Pastor, I got to go because I'm not being fed. The reality is, it's not that you're not being fed. You don't like the food. All right. <laughs> there is something to be said about being and blooming where you are planted. Amen. Uh, about finding ways to work where the Lord has placed you. Yes, yes. What you see is the reality. It might take a while. It might take one yes. day. It might take two days. But sometimes, Sister Bashkeen, I find myself getting happy because I think about if Jesus doesn't come back for 100 years, I hope I'm able to see from glory what the Christian church is yes. and where she's going, yes. the lives she's helping, yes. the way she's blessed. I hope I can see it. Yes. I look forward to the day I'm one of those great cloud of witnesses and folks say, well, why are you talking about being a great cloud of witnesses? You ain't nothing but 36. Well, see, you are deceiving yourselves if you think you're going to be here for 200 years. That's right, man. <laughs> you better get real comfortable with the idea that one day I'm going to be in glory. But that's a good place to be. Yeah. If nobody ever talks about it, then how can you look forward to it? All right. <laughs> That's all the folks last night that was looking at those tickets trying to get 900 million. <laughs> they was looking at it, 11 o'clock wheel, they looked at it, and you know how I many people looked at it about 12 times to see if they missed it? <laughs> it ain't number five numbers. <laughs> that looks like a 17, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the only reason they got excited about it because everybody kept talking about it. And now for Wednesday, I can't even believe it. 1.3 billion. Yes. They're going to go and give all the Lord's tithe to the, to the gas station. <laughs> they're going to take the tithe and go down the street. And they're going to say, Lord, if you bless me to win, I'll give you my 10%. <laughs> <laughs> that's Gonna do if he win. He started saying all the terrible things he was going to do when he won, right? All the folks spending all their life savings just on a hundred tickets. Right? Just win. Lord, if you help me to win, I promise you, I promise you. I'll give a tithe and an offer. And the only reason they knew is because they kept talking about it, because people were aware of it. And the same thing here. Abraham is walking for three days, and sometimes it takes a while to understand what is happening. Sometimes trust is difficult. Yes. Sometimes trust is difficult. 
For you see, when you want to trust someone, you have to depend on the character of the person that you are trusting. Yes. That is why it's so hard to trust someone who lies to you. Yeah. Even when you want to forgive them, even when you say, I forgive you, there is still an inkling that rises up when they tell you something and you say, I'm not sure if that is true. Because trust is something that is so critical. This morning when I met with the three new members who we met here and here the right hand of fellowship, I let them know something that I tell everyone and I'll tell you publicly. My study in my office is safe space for you. I want you to know that if you come and tell me something, you best believe that I'm not sharing it with anybody. Amen. Now that is a difficult part of the position that yes, we're in. It it's a difficult reality if you want to be in ministry, but I take this far too serious to take yeah. what you tell me to tell someone else as if it's father for everyone else to know. Amen. For you see, once I lose that level of trust, yes. it's hard to get back. Yes. Once you find out that someone says, well, Pastor Houston was telling you all my business about somebody, it's hard to yes. say I won't do it again. Sometimes trust is difficult. Yes. Yet Abraham is willing to trust God. Well, they get there. But notice this level of faith that you see there. In verse 5, and I'm about through. He tells them when he gets to this place after three days. On the third day they get there. And he tells the young men who came, stay here with the donkey. And I and the lad will go over there. And we will worship. And then return to you. The Lord hasn't told him a word yet that there was going to be provision made in the mountain. The Lord hadn't let them know about anything except the plan was still the same, Waikiki. The plan was still the same, was to go up to the mountain and sacrifice the boy. Yet Abraham was willing to trust the character of God. To trust the character of God. If God is the one that's looking to hurt you, Who's going to heal you? If God is the one that's working against you, who is working for you? It's this understanding to say, is, oh God, why would you do it to me? But God is saying, no, I'm with you even in the midst of it. Abraham was depending on the character of God. I tried him once and he hasn't let me down. I tried him twice. And I have the boy with me. See, that's in itself. God says, I've given you this. Will you give some of it back to me? See, we could have preached this about tithes and offers, couldn't we? I've given you this. And all I do is ask for that. And then you say no and buy all the lottery tickets. I gave you the boy to begin with. Who are you to tell me you're not going to give any back to me? Amen. He finds himself, they walk up on the burnt off and they get there and everyone won't understand what God tells you to do all. Oh, I got to do it. Everyone won't understand what God is calling you to do. Yes. I still remember, Sister Phil, it's like it was yesterday. I was playing arena football in Indianapolis. Or, uh, no, I was playing arena <coughs> football in Columbus, Ohio. I was trying to get another invitation with the Cleveland Browns. I had an agent. I had friends. I was in this uh, reality, this life. And I still remember the day I was in the apartment by myself because my roommate had gotten cut. They had sent him back home. I didn't know what was going to happen. I played in Indianapolis two nights before. Had a wonderful game. I knocked the guy out cold <laughs> in the midst of that space. I was feeling good, loving life. I came to the apartment. I sensed that God was calling me to a space. Stayed up all night. Didn't know what was going to happen. That next day, I called my agent, Buddy Baker of Ice Miller Associates in Indianapolis, Indiana. I said, Buddy, I'm done. He said, Alex, what are you talking about? I said, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I, I'm going to stop playing football. He said, well, we're so close. They, they might send you to NFL York next year. You're so close. The Eagles just invited you down uh, last offseason. You're so close. The Raiders have been talking about they want to pick you up. You're so close. If you just have one more good season, then you might have an opportunity to get the training camp next year. I said, buddy, I'm done. I went to my friends. Because all my life I've been a leader in whatever the situation was, whether I wanted to be or not, it just kind of happened. Mm -hmm. And I went to my buddies and I said, guys, I'm leaving. And they said, well, Houston, where are you going? And we're watching the film and I'm out there crushing guys. And they're like, where are you going? I said, I'm going to go back home. They said, what are you going to do? I said, I think I'm going to 
be a pastor. <laughs> Some of them looked at me. <laughs> they said, you're going to do what? <laughs> I said, yeah, I think the Lord is calling me into this, this life, and this walk, and this ministry. I, I have a friend who will remain nameless, who said, you will never make it. <laughs> the first time somebody says something sideways to you, you're going to go off, and that's going to be the end. Yes. He said, the first time. Because they said, Al, you got a temper that's hard to control. And I said, I don't think so. I hope not. <laughs> Fast forward a few years. That same friend called me. He said, I'm in a situation where you come see about me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll buy you a plane ticket for it wasn't in Philadelphia I had to go. He said, you're the only person I know that I can call and trust with this information. I got on the plane and I went. I buried his father. I went to see his brother in jail. We prayed together. He received Jesus Christ that night. Amen. Yes. It's the first time I talk about the story in public, and it still amazes me. Amen. For you see, he didn't understand the call of God on my life at that time. Amen. Little did he know that God had a plan all the while. Yeah. 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 Abraham gets to the mountain. Mm. Isaac has the wood on his shoulder. He turns to his daddy and he says, Daddy, I see the wood. <coughs> I see the fire. Where is the sacrifice? There's maybe someone asking you, why do you keep going to church every day? Why do you go every Sunday? Why do you show up on Wednesday night? Why do you go to early morning prayer at 6 a.m.? Why do you go to the men's fellowship? Why do you go to the women's? Why do you do all these things? They don't understand the call on your life. But trust and believe that they don't know the whole picture because God some things that they don't know. Right. They might not understand that the only reason they are there is because someone went to early morning prayer and prayed. Amen. 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 Let me see if we can close this up. They went, they walked up the mountain and noticed in verse 8, Abraham's, uh, 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 his, his testimony. He says, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So they walked on together. They get up there. They walk up to the mountain. I'll just make it plain. You can read it when you go home. They walk up to the mountain. They get up there. Uh, Isaac goes across the, the sacrificial table. His father, who had wanted the baby so long, and now the boy is there. He's getting ready to kill him. Right at that moment, the angel says, stop! He says, look! And behold, there's a ram in the bush. Abraham had said in verse 8, he said, I, I, we're going to come back. The Lord will provide. He told the workers when he got to the mountain, don't you worry. Me and my boy are going to the mountain and we're going to worship and then we're going to come on back to you whole and healthy. I tell you right now, there's some of us right now in the space. you got to start talking and talk like Abraham says and say, though you slay me yet, I will trust you. Though you call me into something that I can't understand, I will yet believe that God can do what he said to do. It may not look like you'll make it tomorrow, but I tell you, God says you can. It may not look as, a, as if you'll ever be healed of the condition, but God says my power is still the same. Yes. Provision made. I'm not looking to you to do it, I'm looking for God to do it. I'm not looking for you to do it, I'm looking for God to do it. That's enough. <laughs> if you go to the end of the text, you'll see that Abraham found the lamb there. And he sacrificed the lamb. He and his boy walked back down. And this was the third time that Abraham tried God and found out that he liked him. <laughs> you remember that commercial? What was it? Kicks? Mikey likes him? Remember that? Try him. You might like him. Yeah. Like him. Like him. 
Now, my brothers and sisters, I have to be honest with you. I'm never going to point you to me as being able to get done anything that really, really matters. But I sure enough know that God can do exceedingly abundantly more than you can even ask for. Amen. So I'll do my best to be the best pastor and friend I can be to. All right. But there's a limit to what I can do. Amen. But thanks be to God. In this new year, I just want you to commit to hold on just one more minute. One more hour. You hold on to the word that God has said. Don't hold on to what anyone else has told you. You hold on to what God has said. He said, I love you. I want the best for you. And you say, God, well, why is all this happening around me? He says, I'm just testing you for a while. They might talk about you. Yeah. There might be some folks that say all men are evil against you. Yeah. But Sister Melba, I'm going to testify that if you just hold out, yeah. then remember that God will make a way. Yes, amen. How do you think that our ancestors made it through when they were slaves? And then how do you think they made it through in a space where they couldn't drink from a water fountain? How do you think they made it through? They, they said that the Lord will make a way somehow. Yeah. I may not know how the way will be made, but God can make the way. He can open up the womb. He can make a job. He can do whatever it is he said he can do because he's God. Yes. Amen. Oh, I know we got to go, but someone needs to hear this today. Yes. Yeah.